Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Venus Chengo, your counseling psychologist at The Mind Spa. Now today for the first time, guys, I'm so, so excited. I have my first guest speaker for the show. Uh, and his name is Jeffrey Jared and Jared is a, such a young vibrant man he'll be talking to us about you know addiction and when I talk about addiction it doesn't matter we all at some point in life struggle with a level or a type of addiction now just quickly I could tell you that there are people who are struggling with religion as an addiction there are people who are struggling with shopping like myself I'll admit guys I love shopping oh my god I love shopping so I've been going also for counseling yes counselors psychologists and all that we go for therapy and I've, I've, I got introduced to minimalist living and so what I've been doing for the last couple of days is just trying to declutter my wardrobe declutter and just do a with what I don't have because when you're a shopaholic there's also the hoarding habit where you just pick stuff and you store them and you never have space for anything the people who are addicts of you know gadgets you know you just love gadgets any gadget that's new on the market you want to try it out and you have so many of these things and just the fact that we are glued to our phones 24 7 I mean that kind of addiction is called nomophobia there are other you know other addictions like sex i mean where some of us are stuck you know we are always you know caught in between masturbation and you know watching pornography and you know basically guys anything that hooks you know uh, hooks itself onto you onto your belief patterns and makes you their slave is definitely a type of addiction we'll be learning more about this but if you're here for the first time and this is the first time you're watching you know this you know this video please check out my video on addiction I think I did something you know maybe I think a 30 minutes video on addiction just to help you understand why people you know um, get into addiction there's so many triggers but I don't want to go into details because I don't want to eat into our guest speakers you know time without really taking so much time guys allow me to introduce uh, Jeffrey Jared um, he's gonna be sharing his journey up till where he is right now and if you're seated out there or if you're watching this and you have a story that could help someone out there please feel free the number is gonna be on the screen we will be definitely we will reach out back and you know get you on the show so looking forward to engaging more with you but don't just listen through please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you can get future notifications. My name is Jeffrey Jared. I'm a university student, second year, pursuing IT. I major mostly in programming. I find passion in computer work because I believe computers are the, are, are the next stage in human evolution. I wanted to talk about my struggles in hopes that it would Align with maybe somebody who's going through the same things, hmm? reminding them that they are not alone. Because hmm? I want to, I want to talk about my um, the issues I pers personally went through when I was under drugs, the pains, the anguish. And my first time was in 2015. Hmm? I had friends. My friends told me we go experience something new, and I was like, okay. Because you're in high school, you have peer pressure, you have friends and you want to fit in. So you didn't want to be the odd one out, right? So my friends and I, one time it was on, Friday, on a Friday, I remember it perfectly. We went behind a building, a certain building. Um, we bought a plant from a nearby bar and we took it. And I won't deny it, it, was, it felt euphoric felt really exciting. We laughed at literally everything. <laughs> we laughed at literally everything. Even the slightest movements just made, that, made us laugh. <laughs> it was fun in the beginning. Okay, so during high school, there was a time my fr a friend of mine, a friend of mine told me we go drink. Kumbe, we had a snitch in our group and he went and told the principal. The principal called us and it became a major issue at school. So it caused my three of, two of my friends, including me, to be expelled. I went to boarding school where I became depressed 
I became depressed about it. I lost hope. I was so suicidal. I was so lost at that time. Didn't know what to do. Drugs seemed to talk more to me at that time. Though in boarding school, I didn't take it to the crowd because I felt like an outcast. I felt like an outcast. I didn't want to join people doing it there. So I, I refrained from doing it for the next two years. Though every time I went back home, I used to do it. Um, drugs started becoming a major part of me during my fourth year in high school, my final year in high school, because I was going through a lot, a lot of family issues, which made which made drugs a part of me, which made drugs a part of me, and it actually affected me so badly that to the point I felt as if I would never recover from it. Um, uh, for example, um, somebody very important to me actually left. Not that they died, <laughs> they left and went far, and I really needed them at that time. It kind of had broke me. So when I when I finished my final examination, I went to I went to stay with my grandmother. Then went came back to Nairobi, where I found a guy who was selling them at who was selling the drugs at a very cheap price. <clears throat> From there. It was kind of a downward spiral because I got the euphoria back that I didn't have. I felt as if I could do anything. When, you know, when, when I was high, like I could do anything. I was so excited. I could jump. It just felt fun. But then again, it reached a point whereby it started affecting my studies. It started affecting a lot from, in my life. Um, that same year, that the next year after I finished, um, I took it for a while. I really, in fact, the whole year possibly. I took it for the whole year. Then I tried stopping it, but I couldn't because sometimes I used I used to hear voices in my head telling me that I'm not good enough, that it's gonna occur again. You're gonna be abandoned. At that time, you know, I was young and I felt as if this is not the place I wanted to be. I was somewhere good. And then from good I went to worse. So like drugs were the only comforts I had at that time. Like I never I don't have I didn't have siblings big enough to guide me or someone even to hear to talk to me to talk to about my struggles. So I just had me and my reflection. Twenty twenty was the heaviest year where I took drugs. I took drugs a lot. My my mother found out I was almost just out of home because of it. <laughs> so I tried hiding it from them, though I couldn't stop. I tried hiding it from them, though I couldn't stop. Because that was the only peace I had. 2020, I usually took drugs so that I could just calm my inner demons. 2021 was a different scenario. 2021, I felt motivated. I wanted to try something new. I wanted to try a business. I wanted to try, I wanted to try a business, and I actually worked hard to attain a business permit and all that. But when the business failed, I went back to drugs because I was so depressed. Like, every th if I wasn't high, the suicidal thoughts were on my mind. I felt as if I was not good enough. I always felt as if I was going to be abandoned. I was left once. I was left and it was just unannounced. I was left once and told, and it, I wasn't even told. I just came back and told, I was told my parents is gone. So like, I was, after that, I just had trust issues. Hmm? If I wasn't taking drugs to silence my demons, I was just like telling myself, I'd rather, I'd rather than kill myself, because if there's nothing for me to live for, or no one to help me or guide me through this life, then what was the point? Hmm? That looked like an easy way out. And sometimes it still does. My fourth year in high school, um, my parents went somewhere. I was not told. I just got the news that she's gone. Hmm? So I was just told that you're gonna live with somebody. And in my life, she was my only, she, I was raised only by a single mother. And she was the only person at that time whom I could go back to. Because I felt safe with her. Now when I was told she was gone, I actually, it actually destroyed me. I was taking drugs to silence the demons. The demons were getting stronger and stronger every day. 
The other reason why I take drugs is because I, f I have anxiety issues. I'm trying to stop it. I'm trying to stop it. I'm trying just to give myself hope that I can do things without drugs. I can have fun without drugs. I don't need to go to drugs in order to smile or enjoy, enjoy life. I'm trying to go back and find the happiness within. Mm? Not the happiness that drugs gives me. I wish people could talk about drugs more. I wish people would stop treating it like a taboo subject. We already know people are taking it. Mm? We already know our generation people are taking it. In fact, our generation is even worse. Exploiting weed, weed is literally everywhere right now. I wish people would stop celebrating the fact that you're getting high and actually look for ways to, to overcome. Like people who are doing it to silence their demons, I wish they could just open up and actually get the help they need. It could not be exactly going to rehab. It could just be talking to a friend. Hmm? It could just be talking to somebody who actually cares. That would actually go a long way. You're not alone. A lot, of, a lot of us take drugs in silence. Hurting, lost, confused. I just want to remind you that you're not alone. And I want you to open up. Hmm? Talk with people who care. So there you go, guys. You have heard Jared's story. Can you relate? Or do you know someone in your family? You know, a family member, a friend who has been there? And what have you been doing about it? Because part of the reasons why people even sink into depression further when they're struggling with some of these things is because there's a lot of criticizing going on instead of people rendering help. So if you do have a member who's going through the same thing, or you're the person who is actually in that space, you can get help. And I want to emphasize this. I always say this, therapy does work. It starts from a place where you're able to disclose and, you know, deal with the fear of what will people say about me. That labeling is what we want to get rid of. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you choose life. And when you choose life, it is your life. You work towards a certain goal. So, if you're there and probably this, you know, motivated you to come and share your story, it doesn't have to be the exact thing, but anything that can build mental health and mental muscle, please feel free again. The number is going to be on the screen. Just get in touch with us and we will definitely be very, very delighted and elated to have you on the show. Um, with Jared's permission, we're also going to be posting his number. If you feel you just like to, you know, um, maybe reach out to him, I'm sure at this point in time, he would like to encourage some of you who might feel that probably, you know, you'd want to get where he is, you know, just talking about it. Um, with his permission, and if you see the number, yes, he accepted, then you can be able to reach out to him. And I'm sure, you know, with the kind of support system we are giving people, we will definitely, definitely win the race called life. Tell you what, no man is an island. We all struggle with one thing or another. The only thing is talk about it. Open up. It's only when you open up that you can get help. Otherwise, if you go into a cave, you hide somewhere, no one will know all these things that are going through your mind. So therapy does work. And the first step to therapy is being committed, being very intentional about it. This is Venus once again from the Mind Spa, your ever, ever ready counseling psychologist. See you. Bye-bye. And before you log out, please hit that subscribe button. We want to grow the page. Share if this video is something that you could, you know, a friend or two could benefit from. Please feel free to share it.